thank you for joining us on You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Scarborough, and I have as my guest today, Pastor Stephen Curry. Pastor Stephen lives in Bethlehem, and he's the pastor of the largest Arab evangelical church in Eastern Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories. He's an author and a speaker. He writes for the largest Arab newspaper in the Holy Land, and he has his own TV show in Israel. Isn't that right? <laughs> Busy. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm excited because you are Arab, you are a Christian, and you're sharing the gospel with so many people. I, I met you in Israel. Yes. I was there six weeks ago and had no idea that today you'd be sitting on <laughs> You Make the Difference in LaGrange, Georgia, but we're delighted to have you. Wow. And I remember when we visited your church that you were telling us about doing an outreach where yeah. 10,000 people came. Yeah. Were those Arab people? Uh, we, uh, they were Arab people. Um, we, uh, in, in, in a, in a three-year period, that's how much we had. In that specific three-night event, we had about 3,300 people. 3,300, uh, Yeah, in, okay. in, in a one-year period, our goal was to get uh, 10,000 people. So, uh, but we're, we're working up there, that's for sure. And 900 um, saved, is that uh, a goal? 960. We 900 actually, saved, right? It wasn't right? a goal, we actually had 960 get yes, saved. Yes, I did remember um, that right. And then we had 2,300 both uh, believers and non-believers, Christians and, and Muslims, who, who raised their hand and said, uh, we believe Jesus Christ. It has a unique uh, characteristic uh, and can heal people. Yes. Uh, they're not necessarily not saying we believe in Jesus, saying that we believe he is able, which is which is one closer yes. step than ever, Arabs have ever been. Um, so thank you for having me. Thank you oh, for having this program so with welcome. you. It's such an honor. So um, uh, go ahead. I, w I want you to tell me how you became a Christian. May 10th, 1990, Wanda. Yes. I uh, accepted Christ as my personal Savior. And I was cleaning a Sunday school classroom in my father's church in Bethlehem. Yes. And there was a crumpled piece of paper laying on the floor, and I picked up this piece of paper and unwrapped it. There was John 3.16. And that verse hit my heart so strong because I resembled that verse to my life. You know, inside the paper was a great verse. Inside my heart, I knew about Jesus, but I wasn't fully sold out to him. I remember I was 11 years old at yes. this time. Yes. Um, and I, and I, knelt, I, I began to, I will never forget, I began to weep and to cry. I said, Lord, I want to be fully sold out to you. And a lot of people ask me, what do you mean by that? You're only 11 years old. What do you mean fully sold out? And most people don't understand that in, in, in the country I grew up in, especially in Bethlehem. Yes. It's either you're Christian or you're not. Right. When you say you're Christian, you will pay a price. You will, be, you will face some sort of persecution, discrimination, or what be it. And uh, so when I made that prayer, got up on my knees, I was never the same because I knew I'm out to yes. be a martyr for Christ. Uh, from then on, I went out serving God, even as 11 years till today, with one thing in my mind, knowing that I have nothing else uh, to lose uh, but everything to gain for Jesus. Yes. And that's, that's the message that I've been carrying. Yes. Now your daddy pastors a Baptist church in Bethlehem, isn't that right? He does. He has a church in Bethlehem, the first church in Bethlehem. We call it the second miracle. Yeah. The first of the birth of Jesus. You yes. Know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it is a miracle, Wanda, because uh, I know you and I have talked about this. Uh -huh. uh, our church was bombed yes. by Molotov bombs in the 90s. Uh, we'd be sitting in church service. They would come in. They would throw Molotov bombs inside the church pews. Uh, I remember people coming to church after church would leave out the doors, we'd see rocks and stones flying at us. Wow. Uh, people still kept coming. I remember one of, the, one of our ladies, her name is Im Yusuf. I would, uh, she was maybe 50, 50 years old at the time, I'd say, Im Yusuf, uh, why are you coming? You know, you have, you're bleeding. She said something to me that changed my views on church. You know what she said? She said, she said well, I came last weekend, uh, Steve. I was, you know, I was still a teenager at that time. But Steve, I came last weekend and I caught a rock on my head. I said, why are you here? Why aren't you home resting? Yeah because I feel safer in God's house than I do in my own. Wow. And, and, and from that age, I started to realize how important a fellowship, a place, a sanctuary is yes. for these Arab believers. And I remember growing, I, you know, I grew up uh, in, in the city of Bethlehem at my father's church, being called the son of a traitor, son of an infidel, son of a collaborator. We're infidels and collaborators because we're, we're born again believers. You know, we uh -huh. believe Jesus Christ, the son of God, died on the cross, rose on the third day. Yes. And I've been called son of a collaborator son of a traitor, because my father, I grew up uh, under my father's teachings in the community to love your neighbor. Yes. To love the other. And who is the neighbor? Who is the other in the land? The Jewish people. 
So even it's just a simple message of love your neighbor, love the Jewish people, love Israel. It, it, it was an accepted message, and, and my father was persecuted. So was I, so was our ministry. And everybody that was affiliated with us paid a price for yes. being a born-again Christian, for being an outspoken Christian, or for, or for not condemning Israel, but saying, hey, you know, we love them, we need to love them, because that's Christ commanded us to do so. Yes. And all this was happening in the city of Bethlehem under my father's ministry. And, but God took that ministry and wanted to the next level. Uh, with persecution, the church increased. Yes. <laughs> uh, people would come, uh, which, which right now I speak to you today. We are seven active ministries under our ministry. It's called Holy Land Missions. Yes. It's uh, because it says who we are. It's Holy Land Missions, Arabs for Christ from the Holy Land to the world. That's who we are. Yes. We are Arabs in the Holy Land. Uh, we represent Christ. We want the world to see who we are. So we have seven active ministries, two in Bethlehem, two in Jerusalem, in Jericho, North Megiddo Valley, and, and a, a nonprofit humanitarian work in Jerusalem as well. Uh, and that's who we are. It sums us up where we're active in the Lord. Jerusalem was never on our map, and I'll, I'll touch on this here while, to, to our program today. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, that is absolutely amazing. I'm amazing. I want you to share with us how your daddy became to know the Lord, and, and he... He has such a strong faith, and he administers over these churches yes, yeah. in Bethlehem and in, in the Jerusalem yeah. area. And so um, he was a young man, right, when yes, he accepted yeah. the Lord. So yeah. I want you to you tell us sure. about that. He accepted the Lord through an evangelist uh -huh. um, at, a, at, a, at a Baptist church in, in, in Jerusalem. And from there, my father was at the garden tomb praying. Yes. While praying at the garden tomb, um, another evangelist was there, and uh, an American evangelist. I said, uh -huh. what are you doing here? And he tells my father, uh, what are you doing here? He asked him. My father says, well, I'm a born-again Arab, saved by the grace of God. Wow. So this man begins to weep. He couldn't believe there's an Arab. Yes. It's a believer right in front of him. Long story short, he says, uh, this gentleman says, my father, I have to go, but tell me, what are you praying for? He says, I'm praying uh, that uh, God would give me an opportunity to find a place to get my Bible degree education. In the in somewhere, yeah. And this man weeps again and says, uh, "So you're telling me you're praying for God to give you education, place to to get your Bible degree?" Because yes, he says, you know, for the past umpteen years, I've I've been coming to Israel. This specific year, I did not want to come, but God kept telling me, the Spirit kept telling me to come, come, come. Yes. Come. He said, "I'm here now, and you're the reason." My father says, "What do you mean? I'm the reason?" This man says, I'm the president of a Bible college. Really? <laughs> and you're coming to yeah. America. A few months wow. later, my father was on, a, on an airplane to the U.S., uh, went to Springfield, Missouri, studied there, and then, of course, went back, and, and we pick up for history where he started the church in Bethlehem. So, yeah. yeah. God is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was definitely a divine <laughs> appointment. Yes, it was. That yes, is was. awesome. Yeah. Now, um, I also met David McCrutman. Yes. Yeah. Yes at the um, Center of Jewish Christian Understanding and Cooperation. Yes, in Afrata, yeah. Yes, yeah. and um, I was really amazed about that organization, how uh, Rabbi Riskin, Riskin has set up a place where Jewish people and Christian people can come together and study the Bible together, share their views together, yes. yeah. and they've done that because uh, they realize that we are all serving the God of Abraham and Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob. Yes. And Christian people don't have the benefit of knowing the Hebrew language yes. and the perspective that uh, comes with the Jewish society yes. that Jesus was ministering in. And so it was very, um, it was just very sweet to go there. And see that. And see yeah. it. And to be able to be so open and honest with someone who was of the Jewish faith. I mean, where, how often do you, does somebody from America get to sit down with somebody who is of the Jewish faith and really talk about beliefs? And um, then that led to us coming to your church. In Jerusalem, yeah. Because you have a relationship with that center yes. and with David Necrutman. Yeah. And uh, David took us, after we had our, our session, he took us that night to your church. And he was able to share about the Feast of Tabernacles because that was the timing yes. of when we were there. And when we 
uh, left your service, he was so he was so proud. Yeah. He said, "That's my tenth time yeah. that I've been able to yeah. minister yes, yeah. at your church." Yeah. And so, tell me a little bit about your relationship yeah. with David. It's a very unique uh, one, a very unique relationship that I have with Rabbi Riskin and David's uh -huh. recruitment there. It's unique because it's 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 uh, it's uh, you, it's unique because it's dangerous in, in one end. Yes. Uh, it's dangerous for an Arab to be working with Jewish people, um, on a faith basis even, and it's unique because it's even more tr much more dangerous for the believers who are following me, who are seeing the facts and the teachings that I'm teaching them, and not only hearing it on Sundays and uh -huh. Thursdays and Fridays that we have trainings. They're hearing it and they're practicing it on practical grounds. Um, our relationship, in a nutshell, is is opportunity where I look at somebody and, and see, I see a person that wants to make the world a better place. Yes. Um, he's not a he's not a Christian. He's a Jewish person. Mm -hmm. um, I have two options. I can alienate him, become his enemy, or I can show him love. Yes. And reach out to him and let this person, like David and many others, so sh see Jesus Christ through me. Um, and I made the tough decision to choose option B, to befriend him, to love him, to have him see Christ through me and others around him to see the love of Christ through me, um, to give them a sense of hope that there's hope for the Arab world. Because many Jewish people um, have sort of uh, given up on the Arab world yeah. and given up on, on the Arab <coughs> cause. And they don't know many Arabs that, that, that are peaceful. They don't know, I mean, there are many peaceful Arabs, Christians and Muslims. There are many peaceful Arabs around, around the Middle East. Uh, there are many that aren't as well, uh, but we're sort of a breath, if, 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 uh, uh, a breath of fresh air to them. Yes. We are. And then I think they are to us as well. Right. So our relationship consumes where us getting some of our Bible college students uh, from Bethlehem. We get together with David Nekritman and several, we've had, we met with four other rabbis, uh -huh. very intellectual rabbis. We've discussed the Old Testament, we've discussed the New Testament with them, which has been, come to a point where David and I have actually spoken in conferences in America. Yes. Uh, we've had uh, a Shabbat dinner experience yes. as well. Um, and we've done so many things, th things I can't even talk about, it's so dangerous, that I can't even talk about yeah. publicly because uh, right now the Middle East is, watches almost everything that people do on the web and people search my name and in fact that's how I got in trouble um, with our most recent incident in Jerusalem. You know, our ministry is known to be a ministry that's unique because of, of the message we carry and because of some of the su suffering and persecution we've endured over the years. Uh, besides. Uh, uh, my my physical beating when I got when I was uh, 16 years of age I was uh, attacked uh, by seven men oh, wow. uh, who beat me to the ground and while beating me I remember I said Lord if you get me through this I would love you even more I remember I said that yeah and when, when I said that prayer I just felt the Lord just cover me with a yeah. white blanket I was I felt safe I felt peaceful and um, those people don't understand them by beating me they were trying to scare me for not talking about Jesus yes. but all they were doing is they were pushing me closer to Christ. Yes. Because when I prayed, I said, Lord, if you get me through this beating, I will love you more. I said this through my mind while I'm being beat to the ground by metal chains and wooden oh, sticks. Wow. When I said when I said that sentence, Lord, if you get me through this, I'll love you even more. I felt God just, just cover yeah. me. Yeah. And I understood then what the psalmist meant when he says, even if I lay my bed in the pit of hell, thou art there with me also. I, I, I understood what that sentence meant. But what it did is made me realize how real Jesus is. And what it did is it took my faith from here to a higher to level. A much higher level. <laughs> yes. where, where today I actually am still ministering in the Holy Land, Wanda. Yes. Because of that beating. Wow. It made me realize that there are others that are lost. It made me realize there are other Arab, both Muslims and, and traditional Christians that need Jesus Christ. And the closest Bible they can get to Christ is by the reading Jesus through me. Yes. And with that, um, recently I, uh, I was on CBN with Pat Robertson, uh -huh. and I talked about Israel. You know, in Jerusalem, it was placed on my heart after the martyrdom of my Uncle George. My Uncle George was a 6'6", 350-pound monster, literally yeah. a monster. <laughs> and Uncle George um, was invited by my father and I to go to a conference in Sea of Galilee. My father and I, we drove up the Mount of Olives, and we knocked on the door. You have to understand, my father was so scared. 
going and invite Uncle George. Uncle George was my dad's oldest brother. Yes. He was so scared inviting Uncle George. Yes. Uh, because Uncle George was a big guy, he's angry. And he, you have to say my father's been beat, he's been stabbed, you name it, he's been shot. Oh, wow. I've never seen him more scared. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then <laughs> ask the big then brother. Then ask the big brother to go. <laughs> uh, so my father says, you, Uncle George has a three-day conference in Jerusalem. Would you like to go? Um, my Uncle George leans over and tells my dad, uh, asks him, is there free food? <laughs> My dad says, yes, there is, and he says, good, I will go. And the, on the bus ride, there's two empty seats in front of Uncle George and two empty seats behind Uncle George on the bus ride. No, yes. no, nobody wants to close yeah. to him. We get to the conference, last hour, worshiping, singing, and I, I see something happening in the front. I can't tell what's going on. So I walk around from the side of the, of the, of the church sanctuary, come around the corner, I see Uncle George yeah. like with his hand up in the air. Jesus, save me, Jesus, yes. save me. He's dancing, and, <laughs> and he was smiling and laughing all at the same yeah. time. And, and you could just see Jesus in him. And I remember I always tell people, Uncle George coming back to Jerusalem, he was in the back of the bus. Everybody was huddled around Uncle George. Oh. He got, he got, I, I always say he, he got 20 years of silence yeah. in, in a, in a three-hour bus ride. Everybody's in the back of the bus here, and I'm sure stories. The bus was going like this back to Jerusalem, you know. <laughs> so we get off the bus, and then he puts his hand on my shoulder, and uh, he says, let's start a church in Jerusalem. And that wasn't a request. That was a command by Uncle yeah, George. Yeah. He says, I says, I want this. He didn't, he didn't want to experience it. He about the Holy Spirit. Yes. About salvation. He didn't know the lingo. He says, I want this. What I experienced, I wanted to, to be in Jerusalem. Yes. Uh, he lived in Mount of Olives, by the way. Mount of Olives is 99.999% is Arab. Muslims. Arab, yeah. Arabs are most of all yes. Muslims. And many are actually uh, uh, fanatical in their, in their mindsets. Long story short, within a two or three year period, Wanda, of Uncle George growing to Christ, uh, we started Calvary. That was the first church in Jerusalem, uh, evangelical in that area. Yes. Uh, that was started by my father, Uncle George. And during that time, my heart was in Bethlehem. I, Jerusalem wasn't really on my target. Uh -huh. I was growing in Christ. I was growing young men. My heart was Bethlehem. Why? Because I was beat up. I was physically attacked. Yes. I suffered for Christ. I had, had, a, had a connection with the church. During a two, three year process of Uncle George growing in Christ, Wanda, Uncle George loved one verse. It still goes something like this. And anybody that keeps his soul or life will lose it. Anybody that lays his life down, yes. he will gain it. He loved this verse. We could never understand why. Yeah. But we didn't know that God was two, three preparing years preparing him. him for something bigger. Um, he was at his home having lunch, and a frantic knock on the door comes, and it was Uncle George's neighbor, and he says, uh, please let me in, please let me in. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to take my home from me. And Uncle George had nothing to do with this thing, nothing to do with this issue. Uncle George invites this man in. In our culture, when you invite somebody in, yes, and you, after hearing his problems, when that person enters your roof, he is under your honor, under your respect. Uh -huh. You have to meet that person's need. I always like to, to say, I, I always like to add, the same goes for God's house. Yes. When you enter God's house, you're under God's roof, you're under God's honor. So you lay what you want. Well, you lay your desires, you lay your heart, your sins at the feet of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because uh, you are under his, under his sanctuary. That's right. And uh, in conclusion, he walks outside and, and the person who, who, who was protected by Uncle George, this is what he says. He says, when he walked out, they had a big old smile on their face because they knew that they're about to take the life of a Christian. Huh. It was a joy. They were doing a favor to the community. Uncle George that day was beat with a metal rod on his head until Uncle George that day was martyred because he laid down his life for another. Wow. This is what, 1998, Uncle George gave up yes. his life. But a lot of people don't understand that Uncle George has given up his life to him. That was his fulfillment on earth. God prepared him. Uh-huh. Um, my father, by the way, prayed for 20 plus years. And the for whole his family, salvation? Well, we, my, my father prayed 20, 20 plus years for Uncle George and 27 plus years for the whole family to come to Christ. Yes. So I would tell people, don't give up. Don't give up on praying for a lost brother or yes. sister. But the, the, the conclusion of the story is the victory. The victory is out of this, God calls me to Jerusalem. Yes. The downside of, 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 of what happened after that is they shut us down because we were renting. Uh -huh. Every time we go to rent, they would threaten the landlord. They would threaten the community, threaten the neighbors, don't come, don't go. We, our church vehicles have been vandalized, the church signs have been vandalized, the church building has been attacked and vandalized, the church kids will be get beat up coming to church. Yes. Um, so every time we'd rent, they kick us out. Every time we'd rent, we kick us out. 
and uh, going back to the CBN interview I had with Pat Robertson, I talked about Jerusalem. I talked about my heart for Jerusalem. I talked about loving your neighbor and so forth. Yes. All within a 24-hour period, I get an eviction letter from the church that you visited me in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. You get an eviction letter out of that church. Huh. Uh, the the community a hidden source. Yes. Uh, threatened the landlord and said, you know, you gotta, you, you will suffer, you will pay the price, kick him out. And the landlords are Muslims, by the way. Yeah. So to them, um, you know, they're fine. They can find another renter who pays less, even though, even though we've we've never missed a payment. We actually pay one year in advance always. Yes. In conclusion, I started saying, Lord, do you want us in Jerusalem? Do you want us in Jerusalem? I said, Lord, uh, are we are we needed in Jerusalem? Every time, one that God be my witness, every time I would ask that question. Uh, all within a 24-hour period, God would bring somebody in my path, either a mother or a child or a son or a father, would say, thank you for being in Jerusalem. Thank you for preaching in Arabic. Yes. Thank you for teaching in Arabic. Um, and every time I would say, Lord, is Jerusalem needed? I, I, say, I would say, Lord, I know you've commissioned Uncle George and then Uncle George commissioned me, but yes. Lord, I, I, I need an answer. I need, and he, he would bring somebody. And you know, um, I believe Jerusalem needs a church. Uh, they're, they're, the the hidden sources don't want us in Jerusalem. The area we were in, the same place you visited, yes. Wanda, uh, we're the only evangelical church in that area, the only. There's zero person ministering except us. They want to shut us down because that's a stronghold. My heart's desire um, is to have a multi-purpose building in Jerusalem, yes. a place where we can uh, bring many of these converts from all these seven ministries to come to train to come to learn the Bible, to have a children's program, to have worship services. Yes. The place where you visited, well, you remember, I remember if you remember, there was there was no place to sit. We had to put chairs in the corridors. Right. I don't know if you remember yeah. that or not. Yeah. And we are outgrowing. We're, not only are we being kicked out, we're actually outgrowing the That's place right. where we are being kicked out of. <laughs> um, and you saw that when you were six weeks ago. So in conclusion, renting as renting is a Band-Aid. It's no longer a vital solution. Yes. Uh, because uh, as, of, as of last month, they told us to stop uh, looking for rent. Nobody's going to rent us anymore. Yeah. Our name is out. Our reputation is out. Uh, it's a good reputation to have. That's but right. But bad for the landlords. So we are left with one option to purchase a church in Jerusalem. And, and you know, I would never think about purchasing a church. That's not nothing on my mind. Uh -huh. uh, but to the community, to the government, you need to show accountability, credibility, uh, commitment. Yes. That we are here to stay. And in my heart, sorry, I want to raise the flag of Christ. Right. by being there to let the world know that we as Christians, born again and Christians, are still standing for Christ. Um, it's hard. I, I cannot do it alone. Yes. Um, it's difficult. You know, I have my people, my burden is heavy. And Christ says, you know, lay, you know, lay, lay, carry each other's burdens. Lay right. your feet at the cross. Lay your burdens at the cross. And, and I've laid, I said, Lord, I, my heart desires to be in Jerusalem. Give me an answer. And God, God spoke to me and said, go, go to America. He actually had been turning me a lot to the state of Georgia. I don't know why. Oh, good. Um, he's God said, go to Georgia. Go to Georgia. Some, I'm going to use somebody to help you with your building in Jerusalem. Uh, we found a Muslim willing to rent, sell us a building. The building will be registered in the church's name. We yes. found a Muslim willing to sell us a building. He's going to sell and run. Yes. Uh, because according to the religion, they can't, you know, allow to sell to, to Christians or Jewish people. Yes. Um, so we found a guy willing to sell us. Um, it's hard. It's difficult, but I know God has a plan. Oh, God has! I know God has a plan for us in Jerusalem. Yeah. I'm just saying, Lord, not if, but when. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean that that is just so awesome, and I know that it it costs a lot of money to have a church in Jerusalem. It does. At, it does. At, about. Well, to to get this multi-purpose building, remember, yes. it's not only a church; it's a multi-purpose yes. building. Um, it'll be about three point five million dollars. Yes. Um, it includes a parking lot, includes a backyard, it's all fenced in. Um, safer for the kids. Uh, it's about a six-story building, and, and when I say six-story building, it's 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 tall, but it's very narrow. Uh -huh. So it's not like big, you know, two thousand yes. square feet or anything. It's it's not a fancy building. It's just an average uh, building uh, that fits and blends with all the other buildings. It's just expensive because it's in Jerusalem. That's right. Um, God, I, I believe God's gonna do something through somebody here in, in, in Georgia. I believe it. Yes. Um, it's not if, but but when. So I'm laying my 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 prayers at the feet of Christ, and I'm saying, Lord, I, I it's hard. I can't do it anymore. Lord, I need you to to speak to somebody that can pray, can come, can visit, and can actually invest and make a difference. So I want to thank you for even giving me the opportunity to share my testimony. I'm just so honored. Oh, you're and so, so thankful. welcome. Your, your 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 breath of fresh air. Because you. You, you, you are the epitome of care for your brothers. You know, when it talks about Romans and Hebrews, um, when one part of the body suffers, uh -huh. the whole body suffers. That's right. When one part of the body rejoices, 
We all rejoice. Angels. That's so why. So just what you're doing right now, you 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 are manifesting this verse. Yes. In in in, in, in this Lagrange area. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're going to put up on uh, the TV show. We'll put up information about your website, and we're going to ask people to ask the Lord if they are to contribute to you getting a building in Jerusalem. And, I, you know, I just think that that would be awesome because uh, LaGrange is on the 33rd parallel and Jerusalem is on the 33rd yeah, that's parallel. Right, that's right. So I've often said on the show that when God formed Jerusalem <laughs> and all that he packed yeah. into Jerusalem, yeah. his hands were around that 33rd parallel yeah. and he placed us <laughs> there. Something special there. Yeah, with promises and wow. those kinds of things. And you know, Jerusalem is an older city and those promises have been revealed. That's right, that's right. And we are a younger city in history and our promises are just being revealed. Wow. And so um, I just ask you to, to think about what you have seen. And I know it's exciting for you to hear about a Christian Arab who's reaching out to the Jewish people who loves God so much that He's willing to uh, have persecution and then just keep on and they and your church members are dedicated to and they need a place that they can call their own, a home that they can call their own. And so um, I hope that some of you will give a contribution, a one time contribution, but I hope that there are many of you who will give even monthly contributions. And, um, and they can do all this on the website. One, yes. uh, it'll come up. It's HolyLandMissions.org. It'll pop up. Uh, they can do that. We are uh, we are a five hundred one c three as well. Yes. Um, uh, so it's important, I think, people to pray and, and support both people like you, who who actually become a platform for us to to share our prayers and share what God is doing. So um, I want to challenge people and, and encourage yes. them to pray and, and support. Uh, ministries like this as well because I mean it's 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 the iron sharp of iron yeah we need each other yeah God gives you a, a platform and and that allows us to become a platform to share what God is doing the miracles God's doing the whole land in Israel so thank you again um, and people can visit the website please visit the website it's holynightmission.org pull up your phone right now and, and type it in there write it on a paper get on the computer do it I want to thank you thank we love you, you Jesus thank you for much we love you too thank you. and I just I just want to say that you truly make a difference and the people out there can truly Truly make a difference as they invest in the kingdom and in this work. Thank you for watching.